comedy robin williams this might be the largest movie sets ever like this is part one of two this might be the biggest one so starting out with popeye i knew this character because of family guy again another family guy reference but they go with the big ass forearms and the whole eye twitchy thing and the pipe robert williams is playing this character and i thought it was fine you know like the one notable scene in this movie and worth seeing is that punch of the octopus it honestly looked like a animated bit because of his big ass forearms he punches the octopus and it water splashes from outside the whole ocean it's like what the fuck is this movie yo and it's ridiculous but also a lot of fun that's the only thing worth noting about this movie aside from that this guy like falls for a lady he falls in love and i don't know like i think this character was based off of a comic strip or comic book i think and then he speaks like i don't know gibberish throughout the whole movie because of his like condition big ass forearms he, like kill somebody with that shit this first movie it was fine didn't really laugh at it it was it was all right really didn't have much to say about it aside from big ass octopus punch the survivors this is a pretty funny movie where a hitman has been hired to kill robert williams and his co-worker and so they have to run away from the hitman but also train on how to fight it and shoot guns and they completely miss and fuck up and whatnot but then also they actually give backstory on the hitman himself which i thought was funny mostly in these types of movies of like assassins and whatnot the hitman's just a hitman you know he's a stone cold killer with no background no backstory but in this movie i think it's funny that they give him like some sort of backstory he has a wife and he has to tell his wife being like hey i'm an assassin I kill people for a living. Is that an issue? Kind of, you know, but I just thought it was funny that it was like I have someone else I have to protect. And I thought that was a pretty funny way to, I guess, give layers to him. I don't think it was needed, but then it made the movie a lot more better and funnier for that. Other people are going after that hitman himself. And so it's like Robert Williams and this guy trying to run away from this hitman, while at the same time, this hitman is trying to run away from these other people as well that want him. So it's this like triangle, like follow up shit that's going on. I thought based off the premise and just what was introduced, it was gonna be very simple, but also very very funny of this hitman trying to kill these two unknown people that just lost their jobs and for some reason people want them out and it was gonna be this easy breeze but it's really not there's this house scene where he goes in to you know get his co-worker and robert williams just knocks him out with this big ass tray or whatever and it's like okay this isn't gonna be a very traditional you know the nation movie because these two are not trained they're not uh, well equipped and then in another house scene where the hitman comes in being like don't freak out i'm not gonna kill you guys anymore there's other people coming after me and i guess us as well and so it just switches that narrative which made the movie a lot of fun these two guys untrained and just not doing well whatsoever they get out of this whole situation are stuck in the snow and they have to walk on the street to end off the movie movie was a lot of fun somewhat ridiculous at times but it was still a lot of fun not like amazing but just a fun time the best of times i didn't realize that i wanted a movie about robert williams and kurt russell and both be in the same movie i think with these two in the lead it's what works because everything else is like football and reliving your past memories the whole movie survives on robert williams messing up his high school football game so now like years later he's like you know what I have a chance to redo that let me redo that not moving on from that and not getting past that but he uses kurt russell to be like hey do you want to you know play football and relive this moment which is my memory and my moment please and at first she's like nah part of the movie isn't all that interesting because it's about football and i don't care about football or sports and just correcting that moment the interactions between robert williams and kurt russell are the best parts like i didn't know that i needed this and now i got it essentially i think this is after the thing as well and so i picture like kurt russell good looking beard and a coat and snow all around him and then you know he eventually gets his moment the age difference and just being like hey how about an old man please and so aside from that that's pretty much it football uh, kurt russell's living in a very bad looking neighborhood he works at an auto shop i think he's just kind of aimlessly living life kind of like most people i feel just living because they have to also makes him a bit happy and then that football moment so it's a movie that kind of i don't care for but i do like because of the leads i do like it it's just probably not memorable Club paradise i forgot about this movie i don't care nor do i remember what i do know is that robert williams is setting up this resort because he wants to make people happy and instead you know over time he just gets people that are complete assholes or horror and then there's even a certain point near the end war happens for some reason it's a resort it's supposed to be like the beach nice food a nice area and place and people are fighting and then that's it i was not really intrigued with this movie which is why i forgot about it and why looking at my notes and list i was like oh shit club paradise i had to look up like the poster and shit i forgot about this movie it's fine don't really care about it i guess just don't have a resort to make people happy or make a profit out of it because sometimes you know bad people or just people in general ruin things things that are supposed to be happy and fun they just ruin it. 
Good morning, Vietnam. That phrase, I first heard it by Lucifer on Supernatural, but also it's another movie about Robert Williams making people happy and laugh, especially at a time during war. Off the cuff, I think one of his coworkers is like, hey, do you know how to do improv or whatnot? And so he does improv. He just says a bunch of stuff on this radio thing throughout the whole like military base or army base or whatever. Anyways, it gets people to laugh. And so because of this, you have a few people, two lieutenants that have an issue with this because they are, I don't know, assholes, very serious and stuff stuck up of like hey man stop it they even take it to like the head of the command or whatever this guy robert williams trying to make people laugh that's an issue no it's not and so in a way they're kind of the villains they're not like really bad guys and then also i didn't know until like looking up just like googling this movie and the runtime and the cast all of the scenes with him on the radio were all improv all of it was not scripted it makes sense because it's really good it's just robert williams being robert williams saying whatever he wants because those scenes were the best scenes of the whole movie just him on the radio talking some shit here and there you know like and now it makes sense because it was all just kind of improvised and just all on him and then he befriends this vietnamese boy which i thought was gonna go nowhere aside from just being friends and turns out this boy wants his revenge he killed a bunch of like american soldiers because his family died because of them and there's just like really good scene between him and robert williams why did they have to die why is there war in the end this boy saves robert williams because of their friendship but it is more complex than you know just like i want to kill it because y'all are american soldiers i got my family killed and robert williams is like like, well shit i don't know i'm doing my job and he has to rethink about do i want to go to war make people laugh and then that's when he just goes off on that airplane and go back from vietnam to the u.s essentially not wanting part in all of this but with robert williams improvising this vietnamese boy and then those two lieutenants this made for a really fun movie Cadillac Man. This movie could have been, I guess, a lot better, but I still liked it. He's a car salesman, and there's even one point where he's like talking to us because he's driving his car after a failed sale. He's at a goddamn funeral and he's like, all right, let me try to sell cars to this like weeping woman that just lost like her husband or friend or whatever. It's like, hey, so sorry for your loss. You wanna buy a car? It's like, what the hell are you doing, man? And then he turns to us, being like, a sales, a salesman, I gotta do what I gotta do. And then the movie proceeds with him trying to have sales to everyone and I guess kind of lie in a way. He needs money he needs people to come to his place and then the whole robbing situation that to me like the last act essentially felt like it dragged on a bit it was like what's the point of this i guess robert williams was trying to use his salesman's personality and techniques to be like hey calm down drop the gun relax i want to pitch a sale for you getting there was like okay cops are surrounding people are watching people are in danger dragging just a little bit shorten that like whole section and so eventually when he gets shot he's like no 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 don't kill him don't arrest them i was just about to pitch a sale to him what are y'all doing and so this is a fun movie like robert williams is on his own he's in a way he is selfish like robert williams is just out for himself the bird cage watching this movie now is uh pretty funny because this movie came out in oh god what's the exact date late 80s early 90s that's me guessing anyways this movie came out at a time where i think coming out wasn't as acceptable as nowadays it is ridiculous that robert williams who's gay in this movie has to pretend to be straight because his son is marrying this girl whose father's like a well-known person and you have to pretend to be someone else that you're not because of society and social norms and so because it's so ridiculous it makes it fun to watch and then he has to tell his boyfriend to be like go somewhere else he comes in being like i'm the wife you know it's like the hell's going on here just let them be gay if it doesn't bother you in your own personal life why does it bother you essentially that a person's gay or whatever you know like that whole thing is like why is that an issue but i'm guessing that's how it was back in that day which is why this movie was made and then when everything's revealed to be like hey yeah i'm a gay man and this is my boyfriend the father of the girl is like huh i don't get it i don't understand it's like they're a couple you know they're gay that's it there's no issue with that i don't think the father has an issue with it I think it's more so he doesn't understand it he doesn't understand or grasp this idea that two men can be together essentially their son is happy with his girl who's actually played by the actress who played cat grant from supergirl the girlfriend in this movie and so i was like wait that's cat grant but yeah for this movie to come out wait hold on let me search a goddamn date okay 1996 so just you know a movie that came out back in 96 being like hey there are gay people out there let them be gay it doesn't bother you just let them be gay they're just gay people in this world just let them be and treat them like human beings essentially and so the fact that the father's a confused and be like i don't get it and then robert williams having to pretend for a movie that came out in 96 it's surprisingly good nowadays 
And finally, Father's Day. I thought this movie wasn't that great. It was fine. It wasn't really funny. It's about two guys who might be the father, a son, to a girl that they had an affair with long ago. And so all I was thinking about was uh, that Jerry Springfield show, or is it Jerry? Like that show that's like, you are not the father, or you are the father, that show. That's all I was thinking about throughout this whole movie. These two guys are on a road trip discussing about who's the father, but what if I am? Are you not? What if I am? And that's fine. The movie somehow decides to take this boy, Scott, and have his own story like he's getting bullied or something like ah, i don't care i don't care about that the second half was just like i don't care the first half was like fine and the mother got her already but like the boy the actor playing scott fine i guess it was supposed to be funny when robert williams and his other guy drove on this road trip but i just didn't find it funny at all it was like yeah it's fine i just didn't find the premise funny enough to be like this is fun or funny it was like it was fine and that was it for comedy part one with robert williams overall a mixed bag some good stuff like the birdcage best of time and survivors but then you also got like popeye and father's day which i thought were okay club paradise i don't remember like that one's gonna be hella short which i don't care about the movie that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching